if you've not watched part one, E&M coding history, and part two, E&M coding examination, please do so before watching this video. As you know, E&M codes contain three key components, the history, examination, and medical decision-making. So you guessed it, today we're gonna be covering the medical decision-making component. Welcome to part three, E&M coding, medical decision-making. If you haven't watched parts one and two, please do so at this time. Otherwise you're gonna be completely confused with this MDM component. At this point, you know that the history, exam, and medical decision-making make up an E&M code and help determine the level. If the key component history was talking and the exam component was doing, that means the MDM component is thinking. For MDM, it is really important that documentation reflect the correct level because this can guarantee or prevent the accurate selection of the E&M service level. When you think about medical decision-making and the fact that it is the thinking component, what topics come to mind? What comes to mind for me is the things on, on the screen right now. So the physician will be reviewing the findings from the patient's history and exam, determine a diagnosis if possible, weigh the pros and cons of treatment, consider the risk of the condition, and order or review tests. The MDM is based on the number and types of problems addressed during the encounter, based on the complexity of establishing a diagnosis, and based on the management decisions made by the provider. Number of diagnoses and management options. There are four levels of complexity for this element of MDM. There's minimal, limited, multiple, and extensive. So let's do an example. The patient comes to see a provider for a minor cough that does not require further workup and was already resolving without treatment. This would be assigned one point because the number of diagnoses and management options would be minimal. Example of point system. E&M auditing tools are extremely useful when you're trying to figure out the level of service. Auditing tools are pre-formatted, which makes it really, really easy to stay consistent when you are trying to figure out the MDM for, you know, each individual encounter. The audit tools will include a section for each of the three key components of an E&M code, and that's the history, exam, and MDM. Auditing forms do vary from payer to payer. Some are based on the 19... 95 DGs and some are based on the 1997 DGs. And what I have on the screen is just one example of what you might see regarding a point system for number of diagnosis slash management options. Amount and or complexity of data. When you think of the amount or complexity of data, what do you imagine the provider doing or thinking? I like to close my eyes and think about what's taking place during that encounter. What's he doing or thinking? So he may be planning, he may be scheduling and performing tests, reviewing lab tests, radiological services, and other diagnostic services. He may be reviewing past medical history. He might be reviewing old records. Amount and or complexity of data. So the amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed is a measure of the need to order or review tests or the need to gather and review data regarding the patient's condition. This is an example of the amount and or complexity of data within an audit tool. So remember that audit tools will include a section for each of the three components of an E&M code, history, exam, and MDM. And they do, these forms do vary from payer to payer and some are based on the 1995 DGs and some are based on the 1997 DGs. This is just one example of what you might see regarding a point system for the amount and or complexity of data. A patient comes in to see a provider and is complaining of problem swallowing. 
The provider orders a swallow study. The provider orders old health records from the patient's previous doctor. The provider discusses the results of the swallow test with performing provider. What would be the level? So I've highlighted the key details that you need to pick out of this paragraph of information. So we have the physician ordering a test in the medicine section of CPT. And that would be the swallow test. So that's one point. We have the physician ordering old health records. So that would be a point. And then the physician is also discussing the results of the swallow test with the performing provider. So that would be a point. So the total would be three points, which falls into the moderate category. Risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality. There are a few components considered in the calculation of risk, including the nature of the presenting problem, the urgency of the visit, any comorbid conditions, and the need for surgery. Risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality. So unlike the other elements, a point system is not used to determine the level of this element of MDM. And according to the 1995 and 1997 DGs, the level of this element is determined according to the nature of the presenting problem, the diagnostic procedures ordered, and the management options that are selected. Risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality. So there are four. One is minimal. This is one self-limited or minor problem. We have low, which is two or more self-limited or minor problems, or one stable condition or acute uncomplicated illness or injury. Moderate, one or more chronic illnesses with mild exacerbation, progression, or side effects, or two or more chronic stable conditions, or undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis, or acute illness with systemic symptoms, or acute complicated injury. And the last one is high, one or more chronic illnesses with severe exacerbation, progression, or side effects, or acute or chronic in illness or injury that poses a threat to life or bodily function, or an abrupt change in neurological status. Risk example. The patient was referred to the provider for an allergy consult. The patient's allergies are well controlled. What level of risk would this be? So for this example, the patient has one stable chronic condition, and that would fall into the low category. Level of MDM. To determine the level of the medical decision making for the encounter, it is extremely important to identify the number of diagnoses or management options, the amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed, and the risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality. There are four levels of MDM, and you can see these in this nice little table. They're straightforward, low, moderate, and high. Level of MDM example. A patient came in for an E&M encounter. The number of diagnoses and treatment options were minimal, the data reviewed was limited, and the risk involved was low. What would the level of MDM be? So for this, we would use this auditing chart at the bottom, and you can see that two of the three categories fall into that low level of MDM. So that's why we would select for this one, low. And that wraps up our e &M coding medical decision making part three. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions, please let me know.